Well, a very warm welcome, everybody, and welcome to our morning service in St. Patrick's, those who are here and those who are uh, reading with us by email, those who are listening by telephone, and those who are watching and listening at home. You are very welcome, and may God bless you as you join with us in worship this morning. Uh, I hope you have uh, the content of our service available to you. Uh, we are chiefly Form 1 in uh, morning prayer. If you would like to follow uh, some of the prayers that we would be using in your prayer books, that would be great. Yeah, just a, a thank you to Lucy and the team for the kids' packs that are available uh, for any youngsters in the church this morning to use during the worship or to take home and have fun with after. Uh, you're very welcome and they're at the booking in desk at the back of church. Uh, also, please, a final reminder for our shoe boxes. Uh, we uh, need to gather them and take them on to their depot for onward journey uh, in the next week. So please, if you intend to get a shoebox uh, completed and back to us, uh, do that immediately. Uh, and lastly, in our notices and introduction to our service then, we're very mindful of the restrictions uh, that seem to be coming across the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, and for those whose freedoms are being impaired and we are very free today. We are blessed that at the moment we can still meet for worship in this way and watch at home. And may God give us a sense of appreciation for what we can do and a sense of prayerfulness for those who have no such similar privileges. Now let us take a moment as we prepare to worship God together uh, as our service moves on to a time of prayer, a call to confession, then our confession and our absolution. Would you all please stand as we begin our service with a call to confession. Dearly beloved brethren, dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the sin by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hand to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things that are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. There is no health in us. But thy, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thy them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thy them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. An extract of a few verses from a great hymn that we hold dear, which we stand now and read together as part of our worship. Be thou my vision. 
Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought in the day and the night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my breastplate, my sword for the fight. Be thou my armour, and be thou my might. Thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Raise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. High King of heaven, when the battle is done, grant heaven's joy to me, O bright heaven's sun. Christ of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Well, as ever, anybody said to you, your granny or your mum or your daddy has said something to you like this, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. It's quite hard to understand phrases like that. Uh, I remember way back in summer holidays in, in Castle Rock ages ago, uh, my mum, who loved sunbathing, had too much of a good thing. And uh, for the next 10 days or so, she couldn't walk forwards because she, she burnt the whole front of her legs from ankle to hip. Uh, and we loved to walk up from the caravan site to the Muslim temple. And my mum had to walk with us up and down that really steep slope backwards for the rest of our holiday. So there is kind of a truth in too much of a good thing. I brought some of my things that I love. Jaffa cakes, I love Jaffa cakes. Uh, although once you've eaten four or five double boxes, too much of a good thing. Uh, you begin to feel a bit sick and the dentist might want to see you. Uh, uh, does this ever happen to you? Do you go to, uh, to eat a biscuit and there's an empty box in your cupboard? That happens to us sometimes at the minute. Coffee, I love coffee. Uh, Michael Johnson has the most complicated coffee machine in the world in his kitchen. I love going to Michael's house and he makes me fat coffees. I love coffee in the morning, I love instant coffee, I love machine coffee, I love posh coffee, I love the coffee shops and Valentina. I even could take coffee just as it is and, and, and have it just as a nibble. Uh, but again, too late at night, too much coffee, your heart's banging, your eyelids are fluttering, you can't get to sleep, you're running about like a mad thing. Too much of a good thing. Cheese, where would we I love cheese. Uh, even I uh, love blue cheese, I love white cheese, I love goat's cheese, I love strong cheese, I love toasted cheese, melted cheese, cheese sauce. Uh, uh, I could eat five or six pounds of cheese and crackers, no problem, but after a while, too much of a good thing, it gets to you. Uh, liquors all sorts, I love them, I love them. Other brands are available. Uh, the reason I love these is nobody else in my whole household or even extended family love, likes licorice. Uh, so I get to eat them all myself, and I probably will later today. Uh, so. Uh, you, 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 we all love different things, we all love different things, our taste is very different, but uh, there is truth in the saying, too much of a good thing is, is not good. Um, except for one thing, uh, and I hope this is a sermon you never hear, or it's advice from your granny or granda or big brother that you never get, too much Christianity is a bad thing. You know, sometimes we can preach that sermon even if not with our words, too much prayer, no. Too much Jesus, no. Too much God, too much church, too much Christianity, too much tithing, too much generosity, too much faith. It's not good for you, you know. It's not normal, you know. There is a very sad uh, and insidious sermon that goes around churches and Christian circles and communities that would almost say in the same breath as too much liquor is all sorts is bad for you as too much faith is bad for you. That sermon should never be preached and if you hear it, I pray you never, never listen to it. Uh, there's verses in the scriptures, Revelation 3 is one that comes to mind, where God wants us to be hot or cold, not lukewarm. And that's kind of where a lot of people want us to be. You're okay being lukewarm, but don't go too overboard. Don't go too overboard. Well, God wants us to be all in for him. He wants us to love him, be loved by him, be part of his family, be fully committed, fully surrendered, fully available, fully active, fully believing. Let's pray for a moment. 
Lord, young and old, uh, who are listening at home and in church this morning, we pray your blessing upon us. Uh, thank you for all the good things you give us and forgive us where we take it to uh, an extra level. Too much of many good things is not good for us, but we never, ever say that about Jesus. Amen. For Advent begins and the Collect for All Saints Day, please do join me as we pray these words together, beginning, Almighty and Eternal God. Almighty and Eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints, granting us the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you all please stand? Our statement of faith, our creedal statement next in our service. Please join with me. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. Before we hear God's word uh, in Psalm 121, let's join together with the prayer of preparation that you'll see in your sheets or on the screen. Beginning, Father God. Father God, open the eyes of our understanding and prepare our hearts by the power of your Spirit that we may receive your word with much joy and rejoicing. And may we leave here having a deeper understanding of who you are. Amen. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, the, the builders labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring are a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them, they will not be put to shame. With their, when they contend with their opponents in court. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everybody. As you can see, because of a technical hitch, uh, otherwise known as McConnell's ineptitude with technology, I'm recording uh, this morning's sermon for Sunday morning, the 1st of November uh, at home. Uh, Helen is compiling everything as we speak and hopefully it will be in your possession shortly. Uh, we are in Psalm 127 as we continue to look at the Psalms of Ascents, the Songs of Ascents. Uh, there is a, a great uh, familiarity with the verses of these uh this psalm particularly, uh, the, the building project, the security project and the home building project, unless the Lord builds the house, uh, unless the ward, Lord watches over the city, uh, you toil early and uh, until late in vain if the Lord is not in it. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, most houses have a bag of Lego somewhere. We certainly do. And we love still getting it out. Uh, when wee ones are about, or even if there's no wee ones about, uh, we build a house or a castle, we build wee people, 
and before you know it, there's a battle happening, uh, and and we build families and and grannies and grandas and all the rest of it. So uh, it, it's within us these preoccupations of uh, building a home, uh, of of looking after the stuff we have and the people we have. Uh, security uh, uh, and the preoccupations of being part of a family and build, building a family and being uh, part of a family and responsible for a family. Uh, this psalm ticks all the boxes of the things that we are very preoccupied with as human beings. But repeatedly in the psalm, it, 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 it challenges us unless the Lord Unless the Lord keeps watch, unless the Lord uh, builds the city, unless the Lord is at the heart of everything, uh, we do it all in vain. Uh, there's a tremendous link, and many commentators have seen this as they have journeyed through this psalm with bigger brains than mine, with that wonderful passage in John chapter 14, uh, do not let your hearts be troubled, trust in God, trust also in me, in my Father's house are many rooms. Uh, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be where I am. God's great, greatest, greater building project is at the heart of John 14. And what a bridge, what a parallel between Psalm 127 and, and the spiritual truth underlining that psalm uh, and those familiar, familiar verses in John chapter 14. Why is it in vain uh, that we build property? Why is it in vain uh, that we secure our our perimeters? We look after the stuff we have and the people we have. Why is it in vain that we get up early to go to work and stay uh, late at work? Uh, why is it in vain doing our best for our families? Because it's all temporary unless the Lord is with it. Uh, and the Lord is within it, and the Lord is leading it, and the Lord is inspiring it, and the Lord is the cause of it, and the Lord's rules are guiding it, uh, because when the Lord is part of it, there is an eternal dimension to our labour, our service, our efforts. It's quite remarkable, uh, sadly, over the, 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 the shutdown months, the number of funerals I have done, and you talk about people's life stories and you go back to their parents' age and uh, where they were grown up and, oh, but Rector, uh, that street doesn't exist anymore. That house has been knocked down or that house is now a school or that house is now a car park. And, and where did they work? Oh, well, they worked here, there and everywhere, but that shop's not there in Harryville anymore and it's now roundabout and that mill's not there anymore. It's now Sainsbury's. It, so much of the landscape of our town has changed totally uh, in, in, in a few generations. And yet we place such trust and confidence in the concrete, in, in the schemes, in the flesh and blood stuff that we are pre preoccupied with day and daily. And, and man-made stuff doesn't last and it doesn't last very long at all in, in, in the scheme of history and in the scheme of community development. The Balamina that you and I are getting to know and know will not be here much long after we have gone. Some bits of it might survive, uh, but you know, you see you see houses disappearing, you see new houses going up, you see old buildings tumbling, you see new new blocks going up. Uh, and, and it is a reminder to us not to put our confidence in man-made stuff. And at the heart of this psalm is a cry uh, from, from the, the soul of God to the soul of humanity. Uh, involve me. Uh, trust me. Keep me in the centre of your daily tasks, your daily preoccupations, your work, your family life. Uh, you're, you're securing a future for yourself, your loved ones, your kids, uh, your home building activities, uh, even your rest. Uh, work hard and I will give you rest. I will help you to sleep because you belong to me. You are my child uh, and I am building a great house for you. Uh, I will secure it eternally for you and I will fill it with people like you who I count as my children. Uh, it's a remarkable passage. Uh, th there's two walls come to mind as I, I kind of think about the, the imagery in this psalm. Uh, the, the Great Wall of China, some of you might have been on it, some of you might have been... Um, 
lucky enough to be there and, and to, to walk on it. Uh, and 4,000 miles long, over 20 feet high, where it's still standing 12 to 40 feet thick to keep the Mongol invaders out. Uh, but they invaded and they successfully invaded, not because they knocked down the wall, because they bribed the guards and they let them all through a couple of gates. And that was the end of that most fabulous human construction project. And there's a certain Mr. Trump in the news a lot at the moment who wants to build a wall between America and Mexico. Well, I wonder how that's going to work out. Oh, history will show us. So unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord watches the city, Unless the Lord guides your early rising and your hard toil late into the evening, uh, you will not be restful. Unless the Lord is in the middle of your home life, uh, then often home life can be a stress, not a blessing, can be frightening, not a blessing. Uh, and I think we all know the, the truth of that. So there's an invitation. Uh, Solomon is supposed to be the the author of this psalm, and my goodness, when you look in, in First Kings at, at his building projects that went awry, uh, and you look at his uh, lack of security that allowed the nation to fall, really, and if you look at his home life, his personal life, his family life, they're all pretty much disastrous. So I wonder if this is kind of a, a repentant psalm or song of Solomon uh, Maybe it's it's written in the good days when he and the Lord were were involved and and were 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 active with one another. Prayer flowed and and God's will was paramount. Uh, or maybe it's 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 a it's a, a psalm from the days where Solomon looks back and it, it all went wrong. I'm not sure. We don't really know. And people argue about the historic setting of these psalms of ascent. Uh, but beautiful words, challenging words. And uh, I guess we we are we are challenged. Is the Lord part of our preoccupations? Is the Lord part of our plans? Is the Lord part of our building projects? Is the Lord part of our security plans? Is the Lord part of our household? May God bless you as you read and reread the verses of this wonderful psalm. Amen. Let us join together in prayer at this stage in our service and there is a response each sequence of prayer when you hear the phrase Lord in your mercy respond hear our prayer some verses from Romans chapter 8 for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord living God we thank you for your promise that when we come together in the name of Christ he is here among us. We thank you that he is here now, ready to speak, listen, forgive, teach and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, in these times of isolation, apart from loved ones, distant from friends, away from neighbours, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation, not even coronavirus, that is able to separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all hope, we call on you today. We pray for those who are living in fear, fear of illness, fear for loved ones, fear of others' reactions to them. May your spirit give us a sense of calmness and peace. We pray for your church in this time of uncertainty, for those people who are worried about attending worship, for those needing to make decisions in order to care for others. For those who will feel more isolated by not being able to attend, grant us your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of others, looking out for each other, for neighbours near and far, all recognising our shared vulnerability. Each of us grateful for every breath, and willing everyone to know the gift of a full and healthy life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, we remember that you have promised that nothing will separate us from your love, demonstrated to us in Jesus Christ. Help us to turn our eyes, hearts and minds to you. Keep us all in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Amen. Let us all stand and join together now in the words of the general thanksgiving, beginning Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. We join together now in the traditional form of the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Dear friends, bless you for being in church this morning. We ask that you remain in your seats till our faithful volunteers uh, signal that it's safe for you to leave us. May God bless those of you tuning in at home and those of you present with us in church today. And may God keep us until we see one another again. <laughs>